The sliding doors of your train machine will be spawned into the track. Bring safety, bring up your seat, with your hands, arms, knees, and legs, and all stuck in view. If you don't want to slow down and jerk, your train machine will slowly go to the track and may stop momentarily. For your safety, remain seated at all times. During your slow moving journey, your time machine will slowly rotate back and may stop momentarily. On the map in front of you, please show us where you're from while the influence of time travel is working.
again to witness the drive of the
Welcome back, time travelers. Now, we invite you to visit Project Tomorrow, where new ideas and innovations are being developed to make the world a better place. Your vehicle doors will open automatically. Please keep your hands away from the doors and step carefully onto the moving platform. Oh, 
you'll be fine. Yeah. sentado con sus manos y brazos, pies y piernas dentro del barco y cuida a los pequeñitos. A manera de recordatorio, no tomar fotos con flash y luz de video antes de llegar a Ninaldero. systems of our planet. systems is the rainforest, home to the most amazing concentration of life on our planet. These dense and beautiful forests cover only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Rainforests are also extremely rich and productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicines, and other elements essential to our lives.
In the desert, nature has created a very different, but no less beautiful living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. The American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert, but over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. at work on the land, humans have had one of the most profound effects. The need to produce food for a growing world led to the enormous use and sometimes overuse of the land. In our search for more efficient ways to grow food, we often fail to realize the impact of our methods. Today, we're learning to live with the land, discovering better ways to grow food that will assure both human and environmental well-being. In Japan, we're learning that by mixing leaves and other living materials into our soil, we can make farmland more fertile without the need for chemicals. Here at Epcot, we're learning to reduce the need for chemical pesticides by breeding and using natural predators, like ladybugs and wasps, to control pests. In the farmlands across America, we're learning that by plowing under vegetation containing natural fertilizers, we can enrich the soil without the use of chemicals. In arid regions, we're learning to produce food on desert sea coasts. How will we meet tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land? Some of the answers are being discovered just ahead. To help us maintain these carefully controlled ecosystems, and for your safety, please remain seated in your boat at all times. Welcome to our living laboratory, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee and rice, are well known around the world. These are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition for people living in the tropics. Many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. One day, many of these lesser-known tropical plants may be as important as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world.
and edible plant species in the world, most of us are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here, wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Learning how to increase yields of these staples is an important goal of research around the world. on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like these increase yields while more efficiently using resources like water, fertilizer, and pesticides. Another innovation at work here is our integrated pest management program. By populating our greenhouses with beneficial insects that prey on harmful pests, like aphids and flies, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature, like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses and restaurants here at the land every year.
The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponics system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants, and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our labs, EPCOT scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects. The goal of these efforts is to produce higher yielding and better quality plants. ways to increase food production and protect our precious natural environment. Only then will we truly be living with the land. On behalf of Walt Disney World, we hope you've enjoyed this unique journey through our living laboratory. If you'd like a closer look, then check out the Behind the Scenes walking tour. It's a chance for the whole family to get up close and personal with the plants and growing techniques in our laboratory. These greenhouses represent just a fraction of the work being done worldwide to produce the bountiful harvest for our growing population. Scientists, farmers, and even backyard gardeners are doing their part to improve the quantity and quality of foods that we all rely upon. Together, we can continue to find more ways to increase food production and protect our precious natural environment. Only then will we truly be living with the land. On behalf of Walt Disney World, we hope you've enjoyed this unique journey through our living laboratory. If you'd like a closer look, then check out the Behind the Scenes walking tour. It's a chance for the whole family to get up close and personal with the plants and growing techniques in our laboratory. Keep your hands and feet inside the boat and remain seated until the boat comes to a complete stop.
entire flight crew. Thanks for soaring with us. To one fast. Dean Higgins, your class is now ready for you in the Sight Lab Lecture Hall. Please see your way to the Sight Lab. Your pupils are waiting. senses can help capture your imagination. Oh, oh, can I go too? Absolutely not. Uh, this is one of our discoveries, the figment of imagination. Yeah, I know all about the senses. There's sight, sound, smell, touch, goochie goochie go, and taste. Taste like chicken. Can I go? Please, please, please. No, I don't want you out of my sight. Out of sight? Okay. Come on, everybody. Here we go. Figment, you are not to interfere with the chore. Our first stop is the sound lab. We'll begin by testing your hearing with a series of tones. Left ear, right ear. Left, right. What? This is on. Um, hello? Hello? Who is this? It's Figment. Figment? I thought I told you not to interfere. But you've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. <laughs> now I've completely lost my train of thought. No, you haven't. Research 
fiction shows that smells often trigger the imagination, especially when pleasant, familiar smells come into play. Oh, <laughs> time to use your imagination, so let the good times roll! Woohoo! You win one cent! the best when it's set free. You said it, Doc. Imagination is a blast!
supervised children. Thank you. Automated driving technology activated. Welcome to the scene track. Results displayed and verified. Now let's see how your vehicles compare when it comes to their efficiency.
Terrans. I am Nova Prime Irani Rayal, commander of the Nova Corps. On behalf of all Xandarians, I hope you have enjoyed exploring the wonders of Xandar. As you have seen, your world and ours were born of the same moment, one which you refer to as the Big Bang. As such, we are all galactic neighbors in a vast universe which we and countless others share. For you to travel to Xandar would take two and a half million years, assuming you had a ship that could fly at the speed of light. So we decided to come to you. But even we could not have reached you so easily were it not for the Cosmic Generator, an advanced piece of Xandarian technology that creates jump points, artificial tunnels that act as shortcuts linking distant points in space. It is our desire to share this wondrous technology with your people so that together we might explore new worlds and create a brighter tomorrow. And now, as the culmination of the wonders of Xandar, you will be teleported to a Nova ship above your planet for a demonstration of the Cosmic Generator. I trust you will find it an unforgettable experience. Welcome, people of Epcot. Epcotters. Epcotians. Citizens of Epcot. Does anyone know what they call themselves? People. What? People. I'm on. People. Someone needs to tell me when I'm on. People. Welcome. Epcot Terrence, I am Centurion Tau Merrick, and we're just about ready to teleport you up to the ship for the demonstration. As you're about to enter a secure Nova area, I must ask you to put away your Terran communication devices at this time. Recording of any type is strictly prohibited. I am very serious about this. <laughs> now, please step forward into the chamber. You're gonna love this. You do not want to know what happened last time someone did not stand where I told them to, okay? Stand by for teleportation. I mean, of course you did. Nova Prime, they're ready. Excellent. For yourself, what's happening? I'm not sure. Our power's out. And the cosmic generator's gone. Cheerio, Mark. Go to Code Red. Prepare the fleet. And call the Martins. Now. There's no cause for alarm. Turn off that alarm. I've got an important transmission coming in. Hey, what's up, Nova Prime? Our cosmic generator has been stolen. What? How? Who did we figure that? That thing's gotta be worth a fortune. I am Groot. Good question. Yeah, who do you think took it? Perhaps that really big man outside your ship. Oh, that is a big man. I need to alert Nova Prime. I am watching Terrans from the gods. I'm not there yet, all. This species has failed. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. We didn't even know there was a test. Is that the cosmic generator? Are you sure you can control it? Come on, it's me! We got this! World toast! 
first of which can know their souls. Spinners are making me so hungry.
encourage you to select green Welcome to the International Space Training Center. You're here today to train for the greatest adventure in the history of mankind, space exploration. I know you're probably feeling a little nervous right now. Don't worry. Every astronaut has felt that way at one time or another. Even the heroes who went to the moon. But there is one thing they had that you don't have yet. Training. flight training, the most thrilling experience that any astronaut candidate will ever have. Before you decide if it's right for you, let me introduce you to your spacecraft. The X-2 Space Shuttle. It's powered by solid hydrogen and can accelerate from zero to 6,000 in 60 seconds. So when you hear the words go for launch, you'll definitely want to hang on. Now you've already been organized into teams, and soon each of you will be assigned a position. Navigate. Pilot, commander, or engineer. The success of your mission will depend on all of you working together as a team. I'll be your Capcom, and in a few minutes, I'll give you your specific assignments. But first, our flight director has some safety instructions for you. Lieutenant? Remember the team number you're standing on. When the doors in front of you open, you will be directed to a flight station with that number on it. When you get there, please stand on the circles. During your orange team more intense training mission, you will be enclosed inside X-2 flight simulators that produce deep space flying conditions such as turbulence and G-forces. Those who are prone to motion sickness or made uncomfortable by enclosed dark spaces, simulators or snowmen should bypass this experience. As you can see, astronaut flight training isn't like anything you've ever experienced before. It is intense, and if you would like to opt so out, just ask any member of the ISTC crew. I keep hearing the As for the rest of you, okay. no, the flight I mean, we shouldn't have went to France. Say that. We shouldn't have went to France. Welcome, flight crew. I'm going to have team number six. Mission control. Mission control. Give us the go and go for a launch. Eagle. Go. Surgeon. Go by. Network. Go by. You are go for launch. Go for launch. We have main engine start. Go for launch. 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 Go
do, but thank you. I know. Hey, I need to like get some food. Yeah. There's something about my career. Well, I still only read a book. Like, yeah, I, 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 I feel like I need to. Yes. <laughs> Do you hear anything about Ratatouille yet? No, honey. I think Ratatouille? everyone else is here for me. <laughs> 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 Pour le 
Dino.
like, oh no, 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 like, I get that.
America did not exist. Four centuries of work, bloodshed, loneliness, and fear created this land. We built America, and the process made us Americans. A new breed, rooted in all races, stained and tinted with all colors, a seeming ethnic anarchy. Then, in a little time, we became more alike than we were different. A new society. Not great, but fitted by our very faults for greatness. Um, uh, excuse me, Mr. Twain. What's that? Perhaps you recognize those inspiring words from one of America's great writers. Uh, no, Dr. Franklin, I don't recall writing anything like that. Oh my, of course not. They're from the pen of John Steinbeck, back in the 20th century. Why, it seems he has nearly the same spirit as the Founding Fathers themselves. Well, listen to the proud elder statesman. Mr. Twain, pride is one of our national passions. Even those who overcome it are proud of their humility. Easy now. I was born modest. Fortunately, it wore off. <laughs> uh, Dr. Franklin is our genuine American antique. I suppose our story begins with you. Actually, it started long before even my time. It started when dreams and visions of a new world were shrouded in the myths and legends of an old world. Finally, through those early mists of uncertainty, sailed the first great adventurers. This tiny ship is the Mayflower, carrying pilgrims in search of their dream, a dream of religious freedom. So, if you pardon an old man's pride, for me, this is the beginning of the American adventure. This ocean I'm waiting to see A land for these people Who dream to be free So stand by the mainsail The fierce storms will race Aloft with ye mates Our King Neptune will face You'd think that these land lovers Never would last This cargo of pilgrims Twelve weeks for the mast It's land home we hardy at last we've arrived And praise be to God Nearly all have survived But a look o'er this wilderness Brings me to dread That the first bitter winter May leave all dead They call themselves pilgrims These poor wretched souls with a dream to be free in the new world their goal. Yes, far from welcoming the early settlers, this land severely challenged them. It was a struggle for survival that gained but a tiny toehold in a vast, untamed wilderness. In the decades that followed, a new challenge began to emerge. We were growing more and more apart from the mother country. Passion began to govern, and she never governs wisely. Ha! Ah, the British think it's fools we be. If they tax our trade, then our land be next, and soon all else we possess. Tell me now, you ask defense against the French and the Indians. Should you not help pay for it? Parliament's colonial policy is both arbitrary and unjust. That's nonsense. The same tea that cost you three shillings a pound costs us six. First, we spoke out with our voices. Then, we spoke out with action, with a growing defiance that led to the Boston Tea Party. Hear ye! Hear ye! My royal proclamation, His Majesty King George the Third. Closing the harbor. But surely we could work something out. Our king feels we've wronged him. Your king, you Tory. 
either we cut the ties with England or we surrender our liberty. Finally, the time had come to speak with one voice in a declaration of independence. Ah, good evening, Mr. Jefferson. Have you finished the new draft yet? Those are new drafts all over the floor, Dr. Franklin. It seems one stroke of this pen brings two changes from Congress. I told you John Adams should have written this. Oh, by his own admission, you can write circles around him. Mr. Adams has not been prisoner in this loft for 17 days. I shall continue tomorrow. You must continue now. Thomas, it is difficult to make 13 clocks chime at the same time, but we must carefully justify the separation. Dr. Franklin, while you slept soundly through the meeting this afternoon, we did manage to justify separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to secure these rights, go on. another night up here. <laughs> At least you got shoes, mate. There's not a dozen left what can say that. Ah, don't tell me, friend. Tell the good general then. Tell him that half his camp has got typhus, smallpox, or dysentery. And there be not a ration amongst us. Now we can forage for hickory nuts. Aye, while the English overindulge in our Philadelphia's fine food and drink. Uh, it is a strange war we shoulder, George Washington. Congress sleeps warmly in York. And the British, the British party in Philadelphia. And we freeze or starve to death here in Valley Forge. The plains of Valley Forge, my boys, forever we must hail. achieved perhaps our greatest dream. Thirteen very different colonies became the United States of America, and we were free to become an entire nation of dreamers and doers. Westward bound, Dr. Franklin, to new frontiers. To the age of Samuel Langhorne Clemens. Well, I like to think Mark Twain was part of all that. You founding fathers gave us a pretty good start, don't you know? We still had some things to learn the hard way. Seems a whole bunch of folks found out we the people didn't yet mean all the people. Folks like Frederick Douglass. Even amidst the cricket song here along Mark Twain's beloved Mississippi, I hear the noise of change and the crack of the whip. Yet, there is hope. Hope born from the words of Harriet Beecher Stowe. Uncle Tom's cabin has given our nation a key, which can unlock the slave prison to millions. Anti-slavery is no longer a thing to be prevented. It has grown too abundant to be snuffed out. 
like a lantern. Troublemakers like Douglas got us into this mess. He only wanted freedom, not war. Well, listen to my abolitionist brother. What? Pa, he's gonna make a real good Philly Yank. We got a good cause, Johnny Reb. Quiet, both of you. You're gonna ruin Ma's birthday. No, no. Ain't nothing gonna ruin today. We're all together. That's what counts. Now, you go ahead, Mr. Brady. All right, everybody. Oh, real still now. <laughs>
Carnegie Steel built this place. Aye, and it'll soon build a new concert hall for New York. Oh, Carnegie Hall, eh? It'll never last. A donating libraries. Andy, that's grand idea. Tis an age for grand ideas. An era for innovation. A dawn for new awareness. A time to challenge the frontiers of a new century. century on the wings of invention and the winds of change. But our America, the beautiful, she was changing too. We needed people like Teddy Roosevelt and an outspoken naturalist, John Muir, to get our attention. Beautiful. Bully beautiful. Those falls are magnificent. Aye, Mr. President. But it won't last if the timber thieves have their way. John, you may be right, but the country's growth is putting a tremendous demand on our resources. Any fool can destroy trees. Why, for more than 3,000 years, God has cared for our giant sequoias, saved them from drought, disease, avalanches, and floods. But he cannot save them from fools. Now, John, you know I can't ask lumbering to stop completely. All I ask is that we stop massive destruction. What will our children inherit? Seedlings? Of course not. I realize we're not building this country for a generation alone. I know we've got to expand our parks. Then start it here and now. Make this valley a part of Yosemite National Park. Well, I guess we needed those national parks. Seems the simple life of my day was slipping away. But ready or not, we were soon thrust into the hectic role of a world leader and into the war to end all wars. <laughs> Yeah, so 
hope he's right. Folks could use a little prosperity around these parts. <laughs> yes, sir. Before this depression, we sure had enjoyed special blessings. Hold it. But you I know, think it's it real seems rough. to me that it was a mighty cocky nation. We begun to believe that the height of civilization was an automobile, a radio, and a bathtub. Of course, now we're a whole lot smarter. Now Congress wants to trim down the Navy so it'll fit into the bathtub too. You know, it seems to me like we're the only nation in the world that waits till we get into the war before we start getting ready for it. Yesterday, December 7th, 50 centuries. We're uh, barely into a third. That's true, but look what we've accomplished in that tiny span of time. My dear doctor, earlier you found John Steinbeck so inspiring, but he also sounded this warning. We now face the danger which in the past has been the most destructive to the human. Success, plenty, comfort, and ever-increasing leisure. No dynamic people has ever survived these dangers. I may have invented these bifocals I'm wearing, but I can assure you they are not rose-colored. Mr. Twain, the golden age never was the present age. But with human liberty, we can fulfill the promise and meaning of America. To everyone a chance, believed Thomas Wolfe. To all people, regardless of their birth, the right to live, to work, to be themselves, and to become whatever their visions can combine to make them. This is the promise of America. Mr. Twain, it is easy to see, hard to foresee, but I foresee the American adventure to continue a long, long time.
Is it good? Yes. There's good food over there. I'm a vegetarian.
in the stroller.
Mantenga las manos y brazos y pies y piernas al centro del bote. Y mi cuida sus niños. ¿Ya? ¿La